This is my childhood Super 8 sound camera, and today we are going to make it work, shoot Super 8 sound, get the results back, and show you what it's like to work with an antique camera and antique film in 2021. So, I was watching YouTube like everybody else, and I was just checking out some of these videos that people were making about Super 8 sound. Most of them were done by people who have never used Super 8 sound before. So they were buying cameras on eBay and they were putting old film in them and they were getting horrible results. And I just said, I can fix all this. I can make a video and I can get great results. I know I can. So I pulled out my old childhood Elmo camera and I started down this road of trying to figure out a way of making this camera work again. So let's take it out of the bag. And you guys might have seen this before, some of the other videos. So it, 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 it's, it's in my videos for sure. But this is my childhood camera. And it is an Elmo 240SXL. Very exciting. I got this camera at a yard sale along with a projector and they were both brand new in the original packaging. I, I believe I got this in 1988 because my first sound movie that I can find from my catalog says 1988, but I'm not quite sure about that. So don't quote me, but it was about that time frame. And if it was 1988, that means it would have been 10 years old when I got this camera. I believe it was 87, but I'm not quite sure. So, so it was either nine years old or 10 years old in that range. So, it was a big deal to upgrade from a silent camera to a sound camera. And when you watch another video I have about shooting on Super 8 sound and some of my films in the past, I really love this camera. And I kept it over the years. Instead of throwing it away or, you know, boxing it up and losing it or something, I have kept this camera very, very close to me. When I traveled from Boston to Los Angeles, I, you know, packed it in a way that I could get to it right away. And I've just kind of kept a hold of this camera because unlike my video cameras of the past, which haven't meant as much to me, this camera's meant the most to me because it was kind of my first real Super 8 film camera. So when I got this, it was just the biggest deal ever. And so it's been important to me. Hello and welcome to Tyler's first sound motion picture. So the first step we did in trying to make a video was going on eBay and buying a bunch of film. Now, as we all know, you can't process Kodachrome anymore unless you want to get black and white. And since most of the Kodachrome stocks that are on eBay that are sound are relatively old, I just stayed away from it entirely. I went with Ektachrome stock, but unfortunately the only stock I could find at the time that I wanted to produce this video was stock from 1980 to 1982. And so I knew the image was going to be really bad, but it didn't matter because I figured the cartridges would still work. And so we started this journey with buying some film, putting it in the camera, and just going right out and starting to shoot stuff. So we started shooting with the camera, and we noticed that, this is really echoey. <laughs> we noticed that it was stopping. It would run and run and run and stop. So I pulled the cartridge out, and it was all spooled up in here in a really mess. And so we're gonna try it again, see what happens. I don't know exactly what's going on. I think what might be happening is the cartridge is not able to wind the film. And if that's the case, that would be so unfortunate because, you know, these sound film cartridges are like basically impossible to get. And when you do get them, the quality of them is the problem, basically. You know, can the thing wind or not? That's what prevents it from being used. So I think what's happening is that the, the mechanism that winds is just jamming uh, for some reason. And because the camera seems to be fine, it, it seems to run without the without the magazine, no problem at all. But when you put the cartridge in, it really uh, has some problems, unfortunately. So we're just going to keep shooting it until it runs out, and then we'll process it. Because the idea is is that we want to see if the sound stuff works. You know, that's kind of our idea. This video is to see if we can get the Super 8 sound working. But like every single time anybody tests things that have been sitting around for a long time, the camera had some problems. Its major fault was it had a bad belt and it had uh, a bad pin troller. Watch that loop size. See, it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Look at it, look at it go. 
Look at it go, look at it go. So that roller down there is not pulling the film through at the same speed. The pin you can clean up with rubber rejuvenate and the belt as well. But we stretched the belt a tiny bit and we changed the tensioner for it. And we got the camera to a point where we thought we'd get audio. After we figured out that the belt was the problem, This is good. Look at that. Perfect loop. So what I said was that we were going to kind of take the last couple seconds that we know would run for a couple seconds, no problem. I'll take the last couple seconds, I'll come to the studio, and what we'll do is we'll shoot the last couple seconds on the camera and I will take the film out of the magazine and run it on the projector and see if the audio actually works. And this is what we got. Here we are, and this is Super 8. We're live. Wireless microphone, a lot of light. Wireless microphone working on the Super 8 camera at 18 frames a second. This is our first test to see if this roll of film, this old school film. The roll of film ran out then. And so, yes, the answer is this camera will record on this film and record audio. So we, we got that solved. That problem was now solved. The problem that we then had was getting a roll of film that was actually going to work in the camera. And um, that was a tough thing. This roll of film, this was our second roll that we're testing, lasted almost the entire roll of film before it jammed the camera. Um, and so now when you put it in, it, it runs. And then it just, now it's working fine. <laughs> but yeah, it jammed the camera pretty hard. And um, I think just my fix that I did on this isn't the best fix. Um, and I did buy a camera to shoot Super 8 sound with, but for some weird reason, the Super 8 cartridges aren't working in it. The sound cartridges, the standard Super 8 cartridge, no problem at all. We already did our Super 8 test with it. But with the sound cartridge you put into it, for some reason it won't actually run the film at all with the sound cartridge. So instead of diagnosing that and spending all this time trying to get that to work, I just said, forget it. I'll just go out with my old camera that I fixed because we got, we got it working. And now this roll of film is shedding. And shedding is not a very good sign. That means there's, there's something going on inside the magazine. Um, that's something that's falling apart. One of the rollers inside is falling apart or something. And it's leaving debris on the film and that debris is getting caught in the gate. This roll of film had other problems, which is that um, when the film would come out, it would leave these little crystals everywhere. So if you see when I pull this out, there are some crystals, these little dot specks of crystals all over the place. And this is from the uh, plastic sheet that's in here that holds the film tight. That looks like it's been falling apart. And the film is basically coming out of this thing all messed up. And it's very chemical smelling, horribly chemical smelling actually. It smells like it just came out of the, the uh, developer, to be honest. And it's all wrinkled and it's a real, real, real mess. Oh, there's the end of it. And so, um, but we are going to process this roll of film because we were able to get uh, a lot of success out of this roll. And so we're going to send this in and get it processed. And if we get an image, we get an image. If we don't get an image, we don't get an image, but that's our first roll of film we're going to test. So that, is going in to get processed. Now today, on camera, we're going to test a brand new roll of film in hopes that a third roll of film out of the six we got will actually work. So that is what we're gonna do right now. And I wanted to actually go on camera and actually show me opening up a roll of film because um, this is my last good sealed roll of film, except for the one I have up there on the shelf, which is never going to go away. That's my saving on the shelf roll of film. So, um, without further ado, let's do this. A roll of film from 1980 being opened up again, number six. And this is how the film used to come when I was a kid, you know? It used to just come in this box, and we used to just tear the box open and pull out the film. And this film, it's already opened, um... It just, it's, it's been opened, not, not purposely, but the, uh, the box glue had stuck to it. And so here we are. Here is our roll of film. Now this is a much earlier cartridge design than this one. See this one, 
This is the later style with these bumps on it. This is the earlier style that's smooth. So this is an older roll of film, the first one we shot that didn't come out. It's a much older roll of film. So now the first step we're gonna do is we're gonna see if this thing will wind. That's our first step. Let's see here. Because that was our problem we had with the other ones is that they wouldn't wind. So let's go ahead and just run it in the camera. The camera's all clean. Since I had those problems, I've already cleaned the camera up. It's actually still got dirt in it. Uh, this camera's got a stability problem. I can't fix it right now, but... All right. So here we go. So now we're going to turn this thing on. Battery is good. And here we go. It's good. That roll of film is good. So now let's go ahead and since we are gonna drop this roll of film off in a couple days, let's go ahead and shoot with this camera right now and see if we can get um, some good sound on film. Um, a lot of light coming from here. I've got the camera opened all the way up. So it's running at um, 1.6, which is the fastest lens will go. And, um, and here we are, you know? I think it's really exciting that we can shoot on this format um, even though it's not great and the camera makes a lot of noise, it's really cool that we can shoot in this format. But in the long run, um, generally speaking, if this is my third roll of film, my third try, it's not really good averages. Um, so far this project will have cost me about, I don't know, close to $300 to do. So maybe that's the best thing to experiment with. But here I am, 18 frames a second, and uh, we're gonna go back to Utah at the studio. So in the end, it was very disappointing to get our roll of film back and find out that it was total trash, right? That was very disappointing. I was really hoping that it would look fantastic and we could use this roll of film to show people that, hey, you can kind of buy this old film and still shoot with it. I do think that the reason why it didn't come out very good is the way it was processed. I don't blame Spectre at all. This is the trick that they use. It's not their fault. They cross process it. And you know what? It is a over 30 year old roll of film. I get it. So it's not a big deal. So I'm hoping that in the near future, we can do another test with Super 8 Sound with my camera and kind of try a later roll of film. Just keep looking on eBay until we find something that's a little bit newer and pay the 30 bucks or whatever it costs and see if it'll work and then send it to Film Photography Project instead and see if they can process it and make it look good. I would just love to have uh, a, a positive roll of film that's color, that's shot with Super 8 Sound camera, that can show the best of what Super 8 Sound today can do. Because I think when you look at this old film, I think in the long run, it's totally trash and, and not a good way to go. Buying a bunch of junk film on eBay is not gonna make you a happy movie star, you know? I could process this myself and, you know, make it uh, black and white, but it might not come out well at all. It's a waste of my time and chemicals. So since time is money, right, and, and my time is very valuable, I just don't bother doing that, and I trust the labs to do their job. So the next time we do another one of these tests, we'll probably try a different roll of film that's much newer and send it to Film Photography Project and have them scan it and see what it comes out like. Because maybe we're missing something on, on the processing, but I don't think so. I think our rolls of film are all dead. I think they've been heated and they're garbage and they just be thrown away. And that's too bad because I spent a hundred bucks in the rolls of film. I spent almost a hundred bucks in processing and I spent 300 bucks getting that other camera and to try that camera and it doesn't work either. So it's been a very expensive project for you guys to see how to get Super 8 sound to work. But the good news is we got a lot of other stuff going on with this other Super 8 camera. That's going to be really exciting. But when you look at the depth of Super 8 sound, it was horrible because now all of a sudden you couldn't shoot sound film on Super 8 anymore. In fact, None of the consumer formats would shoot sound anymore. So for people who wanted to shoot sync sound, they had to resort to getting an external recorder, and it was horrible. And so I think one of the reasons why Super 8 died so fast is because they killed Super 8 sound very, very fast. So thanks for watching our little Super 8 sound test. Sorry we didn't have a great result, but hey, at least we have a result. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.